Hi guys, Rhiannon here, and today I wanted to talk about five tips to help you deliver more natural, believable character auditions. As we all know, uh, characters in games and animation have been for quite a while now skewing more and more towards realistic performance. Now, the best way to give a realistic performance is to go and get some top quality acting training. So do do that. There's so many resources available online. There are books you can read. There are free resources. There are schools you can attend. There's so much. But these five tips are specifically for when you're recording an audition and you listen back and it just doesn't sound natural, doesn't sound believable, it's sounding a little stilted. These are five things you can sort of immediately do to help improve the believability and natural nature of the read. So number one, oh, let me open my, there we go. I made a list this time. I'm ready for once. Number one, build character depth. When you're given an audition, we all know that it runs the gamut from just getting a few descriptor words and a couple of lines to a full A4 page of lore with in-depth character relationships. Regardless of what you get, you need to build and understand your character depth because that will come across in your read. If you only use surface level material, you're going to give a surface level read. So what I mean by this is using the words given, and I'm gonna go straight into an example because it's easiest. Imagine you're sent a character, you're just given a name, an age, and the words kind, gentle, motherly, and three lines. That is not a lot to go on. And if the three lines are particularly similar, you're going to give a very one-dimensional performance. So now it's your job to pull apart what that could mean. So why are they kind? What kind of kind? Are they kind because they themselves have suffered? Are they kind because they've always been kind? Are they kind because their father taught them to be kind? Um, you can really, really like tease it out, go quite deep, have fun. It's why we do what we do. Are they gentle because they're scared of hurting people? Are they gentle because they know how easy it is to break something? Are they motherly because they have children? Are they motherly because they've always wanted children and don't have them? Are they motherly because it's the role that was thrust upon them? And the thing is, you now have so many options, like an insane amount of options. What I generally do then is use the context information in the script, if there's any, to help pick what seems like the most likely choice. Or I pick the one that has the highest stakes, the thing that is going to give the most dramatic and interesting read, because that's going to be the most interesting audition to listen to, isn't it? So use the context, build outside of it, get really deep, because the more you understand the depth, the more you're going to bring that out. So number one, build character depth. Number two, pick up the pace. A lot of us already know this. A lot of us are guilty of this, me included. We're reading, so we tend to talk slow. When you listen back to your audition, try to tune in and decide, is it dragging just a tad? Most of the time, it is. Natural speech is quite fast, faster than you think. And a way of testing this is if you're listening back to your audition, read it out loud alongside in a natural way, just like sitting, not adding any character in your natural voice, and see if it keeps pace or if you move a lot faster than what you're doing in the piece. Now, of course, overall, there will be variability. Sometimes the voice will slow and you'll pick up. But remember, natural speech is quite fast, so pick up the pace. Number three, play with physicality. A lot of us know this and we love it, but we often forget to do it because we're in a tiny box, uh, a glass case of emotions, and it can add so much. And you don't need to do a lot. For example, miming a cigarette can do a lot for a performance. Standing with your legs apart can bring more power into your voice. Clenching your fists brings tension. Um, shrugging your shoulders can make you feel a little weaker, a little smaller. Miming, adjusting your jacket can make you feel pretty cool. <laughs> well, I feel pretty cool, like, yeah. Um, any of those things, and even small things like playing with your pinky, like just touching your fingertips, all those things are quite small and they can influence the read in a big way because guess what we do naturally? We fiddle, we stand, we move, we breathe. Uh, an example I'd like to give, it's quite a big one, but for, uh, imagine my character is having a gun pointed at them and they're saying, please don't kill me. And if I just deliver that, please don't kill me, I could put up my hands, please don't kill me. And I can feel how the tension in my arms and my shoulders starts to come into my voice. And it brings that unseeable bit of the performance to the vocal performance. 
So play with your physicality. Of course, with the caveat, make sure you don't hit anything. <laughs> That's why I love having an, uh, a mic that comes down because there's nothing to bash here. Um, and of course, wear clothing that doesn't rustle and no jewelry. <clears throat> Number four, let us hear you think. So we love to hear uh, an um and an ah. Uh. The lines are spontaneous because naturally, we're not predicting everything we're going to say. It just sort of comes out, much like these rants of mine. So let us hear where you pause and consider an idea, where you're coming up with a thought, and then maybe you pick up to that regular speech pace once you realize what you're going to say. And then you're trying to remember what someone told you about that thing, and then you come back to it, but you're not sure. And you have to pause, and then you're back to it. That was very over the top, really, but... Remember to go back and, and think about how you're coming up with these thoughts. Is it a thought that this character's always known? Is this a thought that a character's realizing in the moment? Is this a memory that they're trying to recall? Or do they recall it well because it's their favorite memory and they revisit it a lot? Use that to implement um, natural reads. So let us hear what you think. Or let us hear you think. There we go. Number four, let us hear you think. Number five, Add a line. This is my favorite, and it's add a line just for you. Not an ad lib. This is a line that you add before you read the line that helps you bring energy and context to the character. For example, my character needs to say, I'm out of here, in like an apocalypse scenario, like they're leaving the base and they're, they're fed up or things are really stressful. I might add a, oh, screw this. I'm out of here, because it helps me feel the tension of the previous moment. Now, the trick here is to make sure you add a big enough gap before you go into the actual line that you can easily cut out the previous line. Because if you, I just knocked my desk, that's what not to do with physicality. Um, if you run it too close together, you won't be able to separate it. And then you'll have ruined this wonderful line that you were gonna send in. It can be something as small as a well, or a but, or a sigh. Um, it could be a shout, like, hey, what are you doing? Say the line was just, what are you doing? But now we've got the energy from the, hey, like I've grabbed your attention. What are you doing? Things like that will help shake you up and just make it feel more natural to you and in the moment to you. So, all up, we've got number one, build character depth. Number two, pick up the pace. Number three, play with physicality. Number four, let us hear you think. And number five, add a line just for you. I hope these tips help you build more natural and believable character auditions and tell me what you think. I'd love to know if these tips are helpful or if you'd like to hear more. And I'm getting really red and sweaty. It's really warm in here. So I'll leave you with that. Thanks, guys. Bye.